G'day, it's uh, Prezzo here and welcome back to my shop. The job that I have here today is uh, for a friend of mine. Uh, I've known Pete for a long time. Uh, some people say he doesn't like spending money, but you know what? I don't believe that at all. This part that he's given me is from a small gas barbecue. There were originally two burner tubes screwed to this uh, part and they carry the gas from the regulator and the, the valve to this inside cavity of this burner. Those parts were okay and we were able to salvage those and Pete had a go at raising this up at some point as the hole started to develop in it. But as you can see, it's pretty much beyond redemption. This, this part just has to be binned. I did try to find a replacement for this part on a US part supply site and typically what happens is they charge 46 US dollars for the part, about 60 dollars for shipping to Australia. So by the time you do the conversion to the Australian peso, it's pretty much out of the question. I eventually recommended to Pete that he just bin the entire barbecue and buy a new one. But I had a look at this and I thought, you know what, I should be able to fabricate a replacement part. It is essentially just two flat sheets with some sort of a, an edge uh, into which we can drill these holes, which are the burners. I can see that there's a divider in here. This, this is um, one of those barbecues where you can have one side or the other or both sides of the burner at the same time. And I reasoned that if I was to make two cavities out of this, I could make it work. So I drew the profile of that burner and I just took all the dimensions off this part and I figured that if I cut one of these I could then spot weld to that a right angle bent piece of stainless steel and then I could drill the holes for the burner jets in this strip and it would just be a matter of attaching that to that edge of that plate and somehow bending it around this curve and making some sort of a bridge or a divider in the center. So, so far there's nothing terribly complex about doing this. The, the bending process is fairly straightforward. Curving it around is just going to mean notching this in some way and bending it to the required curve. I'm going to invite you to tag along as I do this and I understand that not everyone is ever going to want to make a gas uh, barbecue burner and uh, certainly not one the same as this but the notion is that if you watch somebody doing a job you inevitably are going to learn something so um, I know this is not rocket science but I'm, I'm going to ask you to have a look anyway so what I have to do is to cut this out accurately along this line here and I don't have a guillotine to do this on here you try and cut this by hand, it's going to kink and uh, you're going to get a, a ragged edge on it. I do have access to a guillotine uh, at another location and my sheet metal press uh, is not the best and it certainly can't do anything long enough to go right around this perimeter. So I'm going to get all that prepped off site, I'll bring it back and the next thing we'll do is to drill the holes for the, the jets or the, the actual burner holes in this strip of material here. So um, stay with me and we'll be back soon. Okay, well here is my setup for drilling the gas burner jets in this piece of right angle bent stainless steel strip. I've screwed a spoil board down to the table of my mill and I've clamped the stainless steel strip to the spoil board with a couple of strap clamps and I've fitted uh, two washers which bear up against the edge of the strip and the reason I had to do this was that um, my mill doesn't have enough travel to be able to drill all of the holes. So my G-code is going to drill all but 10 of the, the holes. I'll have to loosen the strap clamps, slide the strip along, pick up uh, one of the holes as an index, and then drill the last 10. I've used a center finder to uh, find my corner here, which I've set as my origin, and they're going to be at 3 16 of an inch pitch and 3 32nd diameter holes. So I'm going to go ahead and change out to a center drill and then we'll have a go at drilling the, the first set of holes. So this is how I came up with the CAD data for my G-code. Um, I use Corel Draw to do all of my 2D drawing. I drew a rectangle which represents the stainless steel strip 
and I worked out my offset for the first hole and then I used CorelDRAW's step and repeat feature to draw all of those holes and then I exported that as a DXF into Kanban which is what I used to create the, the G-code. Interestingly the first time I did this I found the exact center of the strip I drew the first hole there and then I did a step and repeat say for 40 holes to the left and then I just simply cut and pasted those on the right and then exported that as a DXF. Now when I got to Kanban it didn't care it just imported that as a DXF and then I told it to create the, the G-code but interestingly the drill bit when I started the G-code running would run to the very center of the strip drill that hole first and then drill all the holes to the left to come back to the center and then start drilling all the holes to the right which is a bit unusual I would have assumed that it would start at the origin drill the first hole closest to that and then work its way to the left away from the origin so what it was doing was it was actually drilling the holes in the order that they were drawn in Corel Draw and saved as a DXF so if you're using CAMBAM and you find that it's creating G-code where things don't happen in a logical way if they appear to be machining features that are you know sort of a illogical sequence it could be because of that in any case I've I went back to Corel Draw and I redrew the graphic came back into here and now it actually does what I wanted it to do which was to start closest to the origin and work away from it so let's um, let's get the G-code running and see how that works So I'm using a center drill with a 332nd diameter pilot on the end and I'm just setting my Z and the G-code is going to drill that hole 4 millimeters deep with an 8 millimeter retract. So we'll just retract our Z there and I'm going to use a little bit of um, cutting oil on this. Uh, my main issue is that the drill bit may try to lift that strip uh, as it retracts. So I'm just going to have to watch that, especially near the middle. You might see me hold that down with a stick just to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so let's try running the program now. I'm going to run this on single step just to make sure it doesn't do anything silly. Okay, so that's done all but the last 10 holes and that's about as much as I'm going to get out of my machine. So I'll loosen these strap clamps, we'll slide the strip along and then we'll uh, put the drill bit back in one of the holes just to register the pattern and then we can drill the last 10 holes. Okay, so my problem is that the burrs that have been created by the drilling process have actually welded into that piece of composite plastic there so we're going to have to lever this up and probably deburr it before we can go any further. So got lots and lots of little burrs there so I'm going to just go and probably file these off, get that cleaned up and then we'll have a go at drilling the rest of the pattern. Alright, so I just um, re-registered that hole with the drill bit, so I've, I've actually set my X0 there and I'll just let the program run now to do the last 10 holes, I'll just stop it manually before it runs over this fold line here. Right, so Z is set there, let's see how we go, we're just going to rewind the program. Okay, so that's all the holes drilled and I'll just finish off deburr the last of those and then we'll have a look at the, uh, the bending process. So with all my holes drilled now for the gas jets and that's deburred on the other side, the next step is to work out how this is going to be spot welded to this 
top plate. And just to state the obvious, uh, we're going to have to cut some notches in these sections of the, the flange here so that it's possible to actually bend this around in the, the shape that I want. So what I've got here is a, a lap at this end which is going to make a, a joint as the material loops around and joins back onto itself. Uh, actually that, that's going to go that way. So we've got the, the lap here, we've got the return bend here which is going to fit across the middle to make a gas tight compartment on both sides of the burner. We've got a straight section which will run down this side here and this section here is the, the curve. So it's going to loop around that half circle there and then a remaining straight section on this side. So what I'm going to do next is to uh, cut the notches and we'll do some preliminary bending and see how that all works out. So what I found out with this curved end is that I can cut or cut a notch at every third hole and that will give me enough flexibility to form that around that curve. So we'll see how that goes. So I guess the, the first thing to do now is to cut the, the lap at this end. I know that this has worked now. I've checked dimensions so I can trim this exactly the length. So I need to cut some clearance at this end for the lap joint. How easy that is to see. Now I'm just going to cut a slight angle at the top as well. This is mainly to make sure we don't have any clearance issues. So on this return here we're going to need a 90 degree notch that's 45 degrees either side of centre and I'm just going to start off with a straight cut there and you know what I'm just going to estimate this it's probably going to go a little bit more than 45 degrees Remember, all of this is going to be on the inside and I can adjust this if it's not quite right I'm not going to cut my fingers there, I'll get a pair of pliers for doing that. So on the straight, we're just going to cut, once again, a little bit of clearance here. Same at the other end of the curved section. And right at the very end where it butts back into that lap, I'm just going to cut a bit of clearance there as well. So that's the, the basic configuration of the material before we start trying to do this curved section here. So I'm just going to mark this so I don't make any mistakes and then we'll go around and notch all of that and then we'll bend that round a mandrel to get close to our correct or ideal curve. So I'll just mark where I want to put these notches. I realise now that I've got an odd spacing at this end so all of these are uh, spacing of three. I've got one on the end that's four. So. I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference with the final shape of the curve. So just let me go ahead and cut these. Alright, uh, those things are going off like bullets. Okay, so that makes that flexible now and it's going to be possible to form that round in the curve that I want. There's a lot of distortion on this um, section here, so I'm just going to planish that out and get that smooth and flat. And then we'll go ahead and we'll try bending this round a mandrel. Alright, so that's got rid of the the worst of the distortion now so I'm just going to get the correct size mandrel and we'll try pulling this around and then we're just going to make a right angle bend here, right angle bend here and it should go together. So I've got a mandrel in the vise here and I'm just going to gently bend this round from a tangent point and just try and stretch it. It's naturally going to want to uh, sort of uh, bend where the notches are so you don't really get a curve, you get a series of straight connected sections, but it'll be approximate 
uh, and it'll smooth out as it all gets welded down so not too worried about it so that's starting to get towards the shape that we want and when this is all spot welded down I can correct uh, anything that doesn't look right so what I'll try and do now is just sort of um, flatten all this out and there's some little kinks in the corners there and I'm, I'm just going to sort of um, planish them down a bit Alrighty, that's starting to get towards what we want so um, I'm going to do these two right angle bends and that will give us a complete loop we'll do a bit of spot welding and uh, nearly done. This is my DIY sheet metal bender. It used a 1.8 ton hydraulic jack to press the metal down. So what we're going to do is just um, put the flange in between a couple of those sections and get that on the line. Really what I want to do is just get a sharp bend started here. I'm not too bothered about it. The precise angle. Once that's uh, crimped, you can sort of continue that bend around fairly easily. And I might be in trouble with this one, last one, the lap seam. I might have to bend that on the uh, on the anvil. Right, so this is my DIY spot welder. Um, I made this out of the standard microwave oven transformer, and I built it, tested it, and I use it twice, and it's been sitting in a cupboard ever since. And now is my chance to actually use it for something useful. And I've just bent that on a, an anvil with a plastic mallet. And I've just checked the, the fit of the mitre at that end there. Just need to sort of bend this around by hand a bit so that it sort of holds itself together. This will be the easier. That's it. So at this point you want to check this fairly carefully if um, if you get two spot welds in the wrong place, you're pretty much screwed. Get one, you can twist it apart and break it. Uh, but two, yeah, that's that's a problem. I've got an automatic timer on there, so once I set my time, I just press the button to hold that until it's welded. So I get a second weld in here. Always allow it to cool down before you open the electrodes. Okay, so we're just going to shimmy everything around now, make sure it's pretty much the right shape, and I might need to just uh, planish down these lap seams a little bit before we go any further. Okay, so the notion is that we're going to weld this down with a 5mm overlap on the top plate all the way around and it's going to match the the lines as we go so I'm thinking I'm going to start on that return end and get that anchored down okay I'll just um, check that and I've got my return along that uh, marked line there and I sort of looked at the overhang at either end and I sort of got that where I want it so I'll go ahead and clamp that down and get at least one weld in there and nearly always that sort of moves a little bit so I'm just going to get that realigned let's get the second weld at the other end okay so there's our weld on the other side and we can now just sort of align everything as we go around okay so that's looking okay and we might go down this other edge we'll get this other long straight edge done Alright, that's looking neat and now it's just a matter of pushing that curve into place and getting some welds in there and in fact 
that's almost perfect as it is. So I might get one at this end just to anchor it all. There it is on the top. Righty, so that's all done. I will put some more welds along these straight edges, but uh, I'm going to get the other piece in place now. And now it's just a matter of making a cap for each one of these. Remember, this is upside down. It's eventually going to go like that with the flame coming out around this um, overhang all the way around. And uh, it just remains to be seen whether gas leakage is going to be a problem. I don't know. We're going to try that out. If it's an issue, we're going to silver solder all of the joints but somehow I don't think it's going to be a problem. Alright, well that's one half done with all the welds anyway, and I don't think that's going to come apart. That's the first serious workout that weld has got, and I must say I'm really impressed with um, how well it does. It's basically a microwave oven, but um, I might let it cool down a bit uh, before I go ahead and do the rest of the welds. So the next step is going to be to uh, try and make these flange plates that make that a gas tight seal and uh, I'm going to use the same material that I've used here and I'll probably mark it out directly from the job. Well, uh, it's the next day and I have to decide how we're going to cover these segments which will contain the gas. And remember that this uh, unit is upside down. This is the way it will be fitted into the barbecue with the, the gas issuing out around this edge. So basically we need to block this off somehow. Yesterday I did make a cover which has a lap seam all the way around and the original idea was to somehow weld this uh, or silver solder all the way around that seam. I went down to see my friend this morning, Maka, and we discussed this and he's decided that if we were just simply to butt a piece of stainless steel over the top of that we could then go around and use the TIG welder to basically just fuse the edge together. So he's had a trial run and we decided that a 2mm overhang would fuse back and run into this edge here to create a seal. The biggest issue is uh, distortion. He's uh, had a bit of a run with it and decided that uh, if we tack at you know, regular intervals all the way around just to contain the distortion and then try and fuse the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is just simply to cut two flat plates which overhang this profile by two millimeters all the way around. I'll spot weld on the, the Z brackets. And you can see on, on this one here there's two of these uh, Z shaped brackets uh, which will hold it into the body of the barbecue. I'll also drill the holes for the gas jets and we'll get those set so I've got this same material, this is the same gauge as what I've used for the rest of the job. So I'm just going to put this face down onto that material and just simply scribe around the profile. And I'll just use a marker for this because we don't have to be terribly precise. And then I'll just cut that with a 2mm overlap. So I'll mark this one just because they're not likely to be identical. And then all I'm going to do is just simply mark out my 2mm overhang.
Once I have that as a reference, I'm pretty sure I can eyeball the rest of it. Of course, the biggest problem with this material is that even with these snips, you get only so far into it before the waste material has to bend up over the top of the snips. And the same has to happen underneath, and it becomes quite tough to get that cut done without distorting the material quite badly. So you sort of take the easy option and cut from the other direction, and then of course it never quite lines up. And already you can see that edge is quite distorted. And that becomes a, a bit of an issue when you're butt welding material together or just doing it as we're doing with a, like a lap weld. This material on the other hand will come off quite easily because the waste just simply curls out of the way. But at the end of the day stainless steel is one of those materials that is quite tough to work with. The upside, of course, is that it is corrosion resistant, it's heat resistant. It does have a number of properties which make it useful for this job. Now, all of this material that I'm leaving as overhang is going to end up being sort of fused back onto the body of the job, so even though it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. So what we'll probably do is just sort of clamp that, go around, tack at regular intervals all the way around and then we can get a you know, reasonably good gas tight seal all the way around. So using this method I don't need to worry about flanging any of this material or notching the corners. Um, if we can get the welder to do the job, we're golden. Right, I've gone around and uh, cut out the other one of these and what I need to do now is mark a center line so that we can work out where the gas jet goes. So I'm just using my divider to locate a center. Doesn't have to be really precision work here. So I'm just sort of running the the rule through the bisectors, which are the places where the arcs cross. So that's my center line. And working off the old burner now, I need to work out the correct centers for where the burners attach. So they're going to be roughly there. So just using that rule. Um, I'm getting 174 millimeters. So I'm going to work out the gap in here and it should be 15 millimeters. That's what I worked it out to originally. Yep, 15. So we'll mark the centers and bore the holes for the gas jets. Okay, so here's my setup and because I want to sort of retain the full use of my fingers uh, when I play the grand piano in the evening, I've clamped this down fairly securely. Um, the drill bit I'm using is one of these step drills. I'm sure you've seen this before and they're available on eBay and Banggood and so on. Uh, these are actually quite good ones. These are um, Sutton brand. Uh, some of the cheaper ones I've seen, I don't know, they might work well. But I've got three of them and I'm going to work up to the second step in this larger bit. And that's going to give me the correct size. So I'm going to use some coolant, keep the speed fairly low. Just devo that on the back side and we'll drill some holes with the soft tappers. I'll get the other one done. Okay, so these uh, Z brackets that I need to bend up, they are 
dimensions so that we've got 20 millimeters which is going to be spot welded to the burner, 27 which is the, the riser and 13 millimeters which is going to be screwed to the, the barbecue itself. So on my stock I've marked this out and you've got to be thinking ahead a little bit. I've actually marked the 20 millimeters on this side. You flip it over and you mark the 20 plus 27 on the other side and then the excess of 13 which is where it's going to be cut off. And the reason you need to do that is it's got to be bent in opposite directions and you need the lines on the flip side when you go to do the, the next bend. So I'll get these uh, bent and by the way I've still got this attached to one long piece of stock. It's just easier to handle like that and if you mess up with this last dimension, this 13, you can always add or subtract a bit and then cut it off. My only problem with this machine is I don't have a stop, so I don't know when I've got to 90 degrees. Just overcooked that one a bit. So to get the last one, I'm still going to have to turn that back to front, I think. There you go. Now you can see why I didn't bolt the machine down. Okay, so there's our two Z brackets. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to cut this off now and we get this spot welded onto the plates before we TIG weld those to the rest of the burner. One of the things that I want to do here before I attach these Z brackets and you can see I've marked out a line here showing where they're going to go. It's actually going to go like that on the outside of that mark. But what I want to do is get the holes drilled for the, the manifold which the gas jet is attached to. And I sort of thought about, you know, sort of aligning that. There's really no measurement that I can use. So I've come up with a, a spigot, like the old clutch alignment tool, and that fits through the, the previously bored hole. This uh, reduced section here fits up inside the gas tube itself. And at least that way I can get that concentric while I clamp it, and then I can do a check to see if it's more or less perpendicular. I I don't think I have to be terribly precise here because the holes are going to be a bit oversized. So if I turn that over, you can see that I've got the, the gas jet concentric with the board hole in the stainless steel. Alright, so what I need to do is just check to see if that's sort of perpendicular. See, I reckon I got that pretty close. So what I'll do is um, I'll mark at least one of those holes anyway. If I can get that one fixed, uh, the other one's easy. So I'll go ahead and do all of those. Okay, well I've got uh, both those burner tubes attached now. And the last thing I need to do before we weld this up is to get these head brackets on. So I'll just show you how to do one of them. We're going to spot weld. And I'm not being presumptuous in suggesting that you don't know how to mark this out, but it's just every now and then you get a, a different way of doing things that you may not have seen before. So I've got a, a location where I want to put this bracket, and I've got to center it on this width here. And you can do the maths, that's not hard to do, but a trick that I learned a while ago I said uh, if you're going to center something just push it right up against the edge and then actually it might be easier if I do it this other way just push that right up against the edge measure what's left so in this case I've got 62 and then just halve that so bring that back to 31 and locate your bracket at that point so that's it there, so 31, and of course you're going to have exactly the same on the other side. So I'm just going to mark that there, and we'll get this spot welded in place. None of this stuff, like sheet metal is not like fitting and turning, where you've got to be 
precise to a hundredth of a millimetre. This, all of this is a bit flexible, they can all move, holes aren't, you know, precision fits, so I'm not too bothered. So we'll get that marked out on the other one and we'll go ahead and weld. There you go. <clears throat> if you're interested in the spot welder, I'll put the link in the description, uh, which shows, uh, I think it was a series of four or five videos I did on the build. But um, yeah, for what it is, uh, it does a really good job. So here we are at Macca's place, and we've just done a, a trial weld on the same material. This is the same gauge stainless steel we're going to be using for the burner. And what Mac did was he went along and, and tacked this at very close intervals and then we did a continuous run along that edge. So I'm going to try um, welding the, the first of the covers on the, on the burner. So Pete's gone around now and welded all the way around that first cover and we've got a lot more distortion than I would have liked on that panel but I'm pretty sure that's going to pull out when we put the gas burner tube in there and we will go around and grind off the excess from that weld, it'll look a lot better when it's done. But uh, all in all, that's gone pretty good. Okay, well there's the second one welded all the way around now. We're just going to give this a uh, clean up with the grinder just to dress up the welds and then we'll test it, see if it's gas tight. Okay. Happy with that? Looks good. Mm. Perfect. Okie dokie. Alright, so here's the barbecue with. Um, Did you show of, them the old one? Yeah, no, we saw the old one. So this is the, the bare barbecue shell. We're going to put the new burner in and uh, connect up the gas and see if it works. And, um, and then to celebrate. We got one of those. <laughs> Alright, do your thing. Just um, move your drink for a moment, right, please. Okay, you've got to see you out there. Let's see where I'm going. We're on the money, honey. That's it. Yeah, right? Yeah, stand well back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what do you know? Have a look at that. Brand bloody new. Are you happy with that? Oh, I'm very happy with that. No leaks? Well, you wouldn't know anyway. Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. No, that's good. It's just like a bought one, Pete. Well, it's better than a bought one. This is homemade. And it'll last forever. Mm. Oh, did it move? Oh, I suppose it'll move, yeah. That's on high. I'll turn it down. 
That's absolutely beautiful. Mickey Mouse, Mike. Mickey Mouse. You couldn't buy that, Preso. All right. So you got any sausages? <laughs> well, I told you he was a tight ass. <laughs> I've got plenty of sausages. <laughs> so here's to a successful barbecue burner. Good on you, Pete. Cheers. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> You've done well.